from the heart of central Indiana, this is Channel 13 Eyewitness News Weekend Sunrise. Good morning. Market Square Arena is entering the last hour of its existence. For 25 years, it has served as a centerpiece of Indianapolis sports and entertainment. Empty now for a year and a half. At 7 this morning, a series of explosions will bring down the arena. Crews have made final preparations in the area. We'll also show you how CDI prepared for today's demolition and how they brought down dozens of other buildings across the country. Good morning and welcome to Weekend Sunrise. I'm Julia Moffitt. And I'm Roger Harvey. Thanks for joining us. Your TV is the best seat in the house this morning. We have 17 cameras covering today's implosion. And hopefully we don't have to give all of them back because we might have a little trouble, huh? Uh, we've got a lot of them out there. We're going to have it covered from every angle. Uh, the skyline will change, obviously, uh, once Market Square Arena comes down. And the big question for the last few days is, is the weather going to impact how the implosion uh, will take place? We have been watching it closely. Let's check in with Lyra O'Brien. Good morning. That's right. The big question, of course, if we have lightning, there will be no implosion. But right now, as we take a last look at Market Square Arena, some fog, some haze on the horizon, but that is about it. We have dry conditions, which is going to be a great thing for the implosion and also a great start for our Sunday forecast. One thing you definitely need to be aware of as we get a live look at our SkyTrack Doppler 9000, even though right now we are in dry mode, that will be changing later on this afternoon. Storm Prediction Center has actually placed the entire state in the risk range for seeing severe weather. One thing you also need to be concerned with, the heat indices today. We are off to a sticky and steamy start. Take a look at some of these temperatures throughout the area. We've got Castleton at 79 degrees, Speedway at 81 degrees already, Lafayette at 79. Temperature highs today will be in the low to mid 90s, but it will be feeling even warmer. And I'll have more on your forecast and also your temperature increase in just a few minutes. Roger and Julia, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Lyra. Well, as we mentioned just a few moments ago, the big day is here. That's right. Demolition of Market Square Arena is now just an hour away. It's hard to believe. Our colleagues, John Starr and Ann Ryder, are live downtown this morning for the Big Bang. Good morning. Good morning, Julia. In fact, we're downtown with uh, probably thousands of other people that are setting up in different locations to watch this. The city uh, tried to uh, advise people to stay away, but uh, a gentleman just came up to us and he said, how can they think that we're going to stay away from this? This is a big event and it's going to be happening in just about 58 minutes from now. You know, if you're watching us, you probably have the best seat in the house because we're only about two blocks away. You can see we have an absolutely clear shot of what's going to be this demolition. You know, 25 years of memories will come down in just about 13 seconds. So if you're in your pajamas, get the coffee going. We're going to give you the best seat in the house. We've got cameras all over the place. In fact, uh, we have one camera at the top of the bank, one building downtown. That's the tallest building downtown. Take a look at the shot from there. You can see that uh, it is a beautiful one, and you'll be able to see the top of the dome fall straight in when the demolition takes place at about 7 o'clock this morning. Clearly, it's already in sections, and this will pancake down on top of itself. Now, one thing you have to know if you're headed out this morning is they will be closing down the interstates around the area for a while, and that is to avoid people getting into accidents. Let's go up to Chopper 13, where we'll get a better explanation. Paul Casey up there. Well, the whole idea is to keep uh, people from stopping on the interstates to watch what's going on. So they're basically closing the area uh, from, what you, from which you can see uh, MSA. But first of all, at 5.30 this morning, they closed uh, a bunch of city streets to uh, extend the perimeter around Market Square Arena. We've got a map that shows that. Uh, the uh, borders now uh, are um, South uh, Pennsylvania, New York Street, and College. You won't be able to get in there at all. Now, as far as the interstates are concerned, uh, we're talking about uh, maybe 39 minutes or so before we close those. And uh, they are going to be closed basically uh, to the main entrances or the main ways to get into uh, the downtown area to the inner belt. So we're talking about 70 at uh, Roll Keystone, 65. Uh, maybe around 11th Street, uh, South 65 at Raymond Street, and uh, 70 over on the west side, it looks like Illinois McCarty. Uh, we will uh, keep an eye on that, as well as the, uh, uh, the, the uh, dome at Market Square Arena, and uh, you'll be uh, seeing it as we do this morning. So send it back to you guys. All right, thank you, Paul. In fact, uh, if you want to get within two blocks of Market Square Arena downtown, you're not going to do it. The streets have already been blocked off. And uh, the Indianapolis Police Department is serious about that. No one, but no one is getting through. You know, it's almost bizarre to think that they can 
blow up this building, about 800 pounds of explosives, and not touch any of the surrounding buildings. Those of you who have been down here, of course, know how close the city county building is. Let's take a look at some of the preparations they're making just to make sure these buildings are okay. They're putting these heavy drapes over some of the buildings, and I know in the city county building, they've uh, protected some of the computers just in case. But this company, CDI, is the foremost company in this area, and they've exploded buildings before, demolished buildings, and not touched, not had any effect on the buildings just 80 feet away. Here we've got a little more leeway, and uh, they are highly confident that they can do this without causing any real damage to the surrounding buildings. In fact, they think that this is a, a, an easy job because the buildings are so far away in their mind. And let's take a look at what the inside of the arena looks like right now. In fact, uh, I went in there yesterday. I was the last Indianapolis reporter to get inside the dome. And it doesn't really resemble the Market Square Arena that we all know and love. You can see the cuts in the roof there. And this is where the lower deck of seats used to be. Now you can look straight through it and see the parking lot. Now, there are no seats left in the building. That's just the brackets for the seats. The seats themselves have been removed. And now we're looking down, panning across, looking down at where the Indiana Pacers used to play, where the Indianapolis Ice used to skate. And you can see that uh, the arena is ready for really nothing right now except to be imploded and to fall onto Market Street down below. 30 million pounds of building you're looking at, and it will all go in just one area in 13 seconds. It's just amazing. It truly is a science. We've got the whole crew out here today, and one of them is Chris Wright, and we're surrounded by people who got up early in the morning to see all this happening. Chris? Yeah, John and Ann, a lot of folks are down here this morning. Now, I've got the weather van down here, so in addition to uh, being able to monitor weather situation from the uh, SkyTrack 13 Weather Center, we'll be able to do the same thing from down here. So I'll take you inside and give you a look. We can monitor SkyTrack Doppler 9000 radar with a monitor over here. We also have a television monitor, so I can watch you and John providing news coverage. And as well, we've got the uh, weather van uh, hooked up to our local weather stations where our current temperature is 82 degrees. In addition to that, I'm going to be able to measure the sound. I've got these little sound monitors. There's a train going by now, so things are a little bit loud right now but I'll be able to give you an idea of how loud it's going to be when Market Square Arena comes down this morning. So that's what I'll be doing down here this morning, keeping an eye on the weather and keeping on, an eye on how loud that sound is going to be when the building comes down a bit later. John and Ann? All right, superb, Chris. Thanks. Well, let's take a look uh, again at some of the cameras that we have covering this event this morning. Let's start with the Bank One Tower. This is probably the, the best view of town, uh, in town. It's uh, from high above, and you'll get a nice, clear view. Uh, actually, from right here, I think we're looking from Riley Towers, which... Uh, if you're interested in this and you live in Riley Towers, that's a good place to be. I hope you have a friend on a high floor. You can come down and, and take a look at this implosion from a, a bird's eye view. As we say, we have cameras all over the place, and this is the shot from the Bank One Tower looking down on it, where you can easily see that they have sectioned this. And again, that is so it falls in on itself, and all this is meticulously timed. Chopper 13 is going to be up above the implosion today. Now, the FAA is making us uh, stay at least a half mile away because of the shock waves that are going to be going up from the building. But uh, Chopper 13 will give us a, a very nice view from the east of the city today as Market Square Arena meets its final fate. And now a place where many of you have parked in the past. Well, actually, this is the heliport, so you probably haven't parked there unless you have a helicopter, <laughs> but also an excellent view. And also there's going to be a command center downtown today. Uh, where the officials, city officials are going to be, as, also, as well as the people from CDI, uh, where they're going to press the button to uh, begin the implosion process. Actually, it's a two-step process. The first button arms the system. The second button begins the actual shocks that are going to bring down Market Square Arena. Okay, we know it's early in the morning, but there's a party underway at Easley Winery, and this is what uh, their vantage point looks like, somebody crossing in front of the camera. They're going to have a great time today. They've got the mimosas out, and I assume some wine as well, and breakfast. There you go, breakfast on the terrace, and see the demolition up close and personal. There are a few companies that are uh, having these breakfasts this morning, so uh, several thousand people will be involved in those when you add them all up. And also from uh, New Jersey Street, we have a shot. This is uh, right next to the arena. This is a mask or a camera that's, that's mounted on a building actually across the street on New Jersey Street. And you see that stair tower right in front of you. That is going to be the first visible sign that the implosion is underway. That stair tower will fall to the south, which is going to be uh, actually, actually to the north. And that'll be to the right of your screen. When the stair towers give way, the section of the domes in front of the stair towers will then come in and the center of the dome falls down, pulling the rest of it with it. So there really should be no debris outside of the dome itself. It should all, if it goes properly, and uh, we, could, we have every belief that it will, will all collapse in on itself and be one nice package down on the street below. They, they liken it to uh, 
punching a hole in a souffle and just watching that souffle fall. You know, I wanted to get up early and make a souffle just for demonstration purposes. <laughs> but I got up early, but not that early. <laughs> This has been something of a spectator sport. You know, this company goes all around the world doing these kinds of things. But this time, they are encouraging people to stay at home and watch it on television. Still, you can't keep some people down. We are surrounded right now by people all up here on this upper deck. So there are still some good places available. Although, if you're leaving now, don't count on it because they have the streets very well blocked off. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. We'll be back with more coverage of the implosion of Market Square Arena live from downtown Indianapolis. Stay with us. Well, Eyewitness News crews are stationed all around Market Square Arena for the implosion coming up this morning. Chris Prophet is live at the implosion party at Easley Winery. But first, let's go to Chris Schubach who joins us from the command post. Chris? Well, good morning. Let me give you an idea of uh, where we are here. We are just south of Market Square Arena, and behind me, this tent, is uh, the command post, and that's where they will decide uh, when the countdown will take place and exactly when they will push the button that will eventually implode Market Square Arena. And hopefully, that'll be about 45 minutes away. It looks like the weather is cooperating, so that should work. Before all that can be done, though, we have to make sure this whole perimeter is safe, and uh, the Indianapolis Police Department is a big part of doing that. Joining me now is Lieutenant Paul Soselski, and tell me, uh, now, IPD is going to be the last one to say, hey, it's, it's okay, you've got the green light. What kind of things will you be looking for? Well, we have everyone here, uh, fire, police, people from the demolition crew, and before the button is pushed, we'll make sure that everyone is out of the perimeter and the green light is ready to go, and we will actually give that green light before they push the button. And you had police crews out here about 5.30 this morning closing the streets. Right, the streets were closed at 5.30, and now so no one can get even close to the arena. And we also have roving patrols inside to make sure that no one snuck in or is walking in there because we want to make sure everybody's out before the button is pushed. Now, I know a lot of people don't know, but your office is right there on the corner of Market and Alabama. It's, it's covered in a, a drape now, and you're kind of keeping a close eye on that. Yes, it's, uh, it was kind of weird because we, our office, the windows were boarded. Uh, the big shroud is over it. We had to cover everything in my office, so uh, hopefully Monday I'll still have an office. <laughs> okay. Lieutenant Soselski, thank you very much for joining us. And we did find out that the uh, blaster box that they will actually push the button is located uh, just behind the Bank One Tower that is just east of Market Square Arena. And we're going to tell you more about that coming up, but for now, We'll toss it back to you, Roger. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We'll check back with you throughout the morning. And as we mentioned, Chris Prophet is uh, out with the folks that are uh, having a little bit of a celebration this morning, right, Chris? Yeah, that's right. We're at Easley Winery, Roger, and uh, 150 guests at a private party here. It's at uh, the 200 block of North College. This is a special commemorative bottle of wine. It is the Market Square Arena wine. Comes in red and a white, and I hear a champagne also. You know, of all the people who have a right to be nostalgic about uh, this arena coming down, it's Bobby Slick Leonard, former coach and now uh, also broadcaster for the Pacers. You told me an interesting story, and, and I'm, I'm not even going to set it up. I just want you to tell about the first and last basket. Well, at uh, Denzel Skinner, we sat down with the Cincinnati floor people when we were building Market Square. So when they got the floor up, uh, Denzel came out and said, here, here's the ball, make the basket. So I made the first basket in Market Square. And then a couple years ago, when we were getting ready to move to Conseco, Larry Bird was coaching uh, the Pacers, and he said, you're coming down to practice today, aren't you? And I said, well, I hadn't planned it. He said, come on down, it's the last practice. He had it in his mind. I came down, all the players showered after practice. They're getting ready to tear the floor down for the last time. And he said, come out here, and he had a ball. And Larry Bird threw me a little pass, and I made a layup. So I made the first and last basket in Market Square Arena. Do you, how do you feel about today? Well, uh, you know, I, progress. Uh, we've got a wonderful facility in Conseco, and uh, Market Square is going to come down. A lot of history, a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of great memories in there, uh, endless. So uh, it. it Kind of, you know, you feel it a little bit. Yeah, we just want to thank you for coming, first of all. But secondly, we want to say that you're going to be over at Conseco watching this. Going up on the roof of uh, Conseco Fieldhouse and watch it come down. Bob Slick Leonard, thanks for joining us this morning. Chris, good to see you, pal. All right. Okay, we'll send it back to you. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We'll check back with you throughout the morning as well. And uh, as we mentioned, we have uh, several cameras all around uh, Market Square Arena. We also, in fact, have a camera inside Market Square Arena. This is a view of the arena right now, and uh, we will have this camera working throughout the implosion and uh, providing us with some uh, incredible dramatic pictures, I'm sure, throughout the morning 
as the Market Square Arena comes down. Well, here is a taste of what's ahead this morning. We have lots on our plate, don't we? We certainly do. In fact, the company that's involved with this implosion has been uh, very busy over the past few years. First, here's a look last year's implosion of the Seattle Kingdom, also done by this company, CDI. And here's a look at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. This just happened five months ago. And finally, this is a hotel in Reno that was imploded by CDI. It imploded our video as well. That's right. That's it how good they are. Great <laughs> but we, uh, we will continue our coverage out there with uh, Ann Ryder and uh, John Stair coming up throughout the morning right here on Eyewitness News. Stay with us. Welcome back to our special coverage of the implosion of Market Square Arena. Many people say that the building of Market Square Arena some 25 years ago helped begin the resurgence of downtown Indianapolis. Well, one thing is for sure, it did save the Pacers, and uh, a lot of people will tell you that it not only did that, but it also begat the RCA Dome, if you will, begat Conseco Fieldhouse, the uh, Natatorium, and all the other things that have that have gone on downtown over the years. Let's go uh, right now to the mayor of Indianapolis, Bart Peterson. He's with us right now. And your predecessor, Dick Luger, is given credit for having the foresight to put the arena here and start that long list of things that we just talked about. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I really think that Market Square Arena was the beginning of the downtown resurgence. And uh, so in that sense, I guess it's a little like uh, watching the death of an ancestor. It's kind of a sad day. You have quite an angle on it here. You can see that it's really m just a, a shell of its former self, literally right now, uh, what's going to come down. But it is a sad day because this is, uh, this is an icon. This was sort of a landmark of the city of Indianapolis for, for many, many years and something that put us in the big leagues. What would you like to see happen to this space now? Well, we've got uh, some folks that we have hired to help us do an analysis of what the best replacement would be. So what we're going to have is obviously a flat spot that we'll probably use in the very short term just as a parking lot. But in the longer term, uh, we want to analyze what the private sector wants to do as far as development there. And also think of it not just as the Market Square Arena site, but the whole Near East side between Alabama Street and the interstate. Because Market Square has really served as kind of a wall between the rest of the downtown and the Near East side. So we're what we're really doing here is opening up a whole new area for potential redevelopment. This whole east side of Indianapolis may look completely different 10 years from now, and I think that's kind of an exciting prospect. Now, looking in the short term, just looking at today, are you satisfied with the safety considerations that have been made, and, and uh, what are your feelings on, on, on that aspect as the arena's ready to be implemented? I am, not because I'm an expert on uh, demolition or implosions or anything like that, although I think we've all learned an awful lot in the last few weeks. But I think the reality of it is we've gone out and hired the best people in the world to do this. So while I might have a little uh, bit of uncertainty as to how you do something like this, as we all do, the bottom line is we got the best people in the world doing it. And uh, we've tried not to encourage too many people to come downtown. We've urged them to watch it on TV. Uh, so that just in the off, off, off chance something might go wrong. You know, we don't have tens of thousands of people throughout the downtown area. And just driving down here today, it looks as though we have some crowds, but not huge crowds, which I think is uh, preferable in my opinion. Last question. You're from Indianapolis, and anybody who is from here certainly has memories of MSA. What stands out for you? Well, things I went to uh, with my daughter when she was very young. We went to, uh, I think we saw Sesame Street live here back, back when she was just three or four years old. Uh, but also, I think my, my most enduring memory is probably the last uh, Pacer playoff game that I saw here against the Bulls when uh, it was game six of that series, the Eastern Conference Finals, and Michael Jordan had the ball, and Pacers were ahead by one, and everybody in the place thought that Jordan would score, and we'd have to figure out a way to win it in the last couple seconds, but he didn't. He fumbled the ball, and, and I just remember walking outside of the arena after that game, and uh, the place was delirious. That'll be one of my most endearing memories. All enduring right. and endearing. All right. Thank you so much, Mayor Peterson. Thank An you. electric moment there, and it'll be electric in about uh, <laughs> sure will, uh. 30 minutes as well. That's right. We're going to go back right now to uh, Lyra O'Brien in the studio. Weather is such an important concern here today. So far, everything uh, looks like systems are all go. 
But long before the Indianapolis ice, the racers played hockey on the ice at Market Square Arena. And you might recall a young Wayne Gretzky got his start right here in Indianapolis. But only about a half an hour away now until the implosion of Market Square Arena. Now here's a look at some of the earlier implosions to get you geared up for the big event done by this company, CDI. Here's the 1998 implosion of an office building in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And controlled demolition also handled this downtown department store fall in Detroit back in 1998. And we'll take you to Dayton, Ohio here. This was in 1999 coming up. A downtown Lazarus department store. Less than 30 seconds away now. Jim, we are in the red. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Elvis has left the building coming from CDI just before the implosion took place. There's the shot from Trapper 13. Not as much dust as we've seen in some of the other implosions. And they said that's what to expect. The winds are blowing, well, actually a little bit toward the command center, toward the place where John and I are. So that's going to be interesting in about five minutes. <laughs> you see a dust cloud uh, where Market Square Arena used to be. And probably about uh, 20 minutes or a half an hour, the dust cloud will clear. And you see the pile of rubble come real high. The crowd really seems to like the show they got. I can see uh, Chris Wright down there with his uh, sound meter. And it was loud. I don't know if that came across on television, but it was loud. He's just handed it off to John. John, what do we have here? Well, he has uh, 102 decibels there. That's the average. He said the peak hit 108 decibels. I don't know how that compares, but I have to tell you, it was a little louder than I thought it was going to be this far away. Uh, we were led to believe that there would be some pops, but uh, what we got was a, was a big blast, and there you see a live shot from the heliport downtown just about uh, two and a half blocks away from where Market Square Arena used to be. Now it's going to be a little while. Here's a shot from farther away. It's going to be a little while before we can see what our uh, camera got. But uh, John was one of the last in the building and was there. There's the mayor right now. Came out to see it. He's from Indianapolis and has a lot of memories at Market Square Arena. Shaking and hands with Mark Luanzo, the owner of CDI, who uh, did the job today bringing down Market Square Arena. And I, I have in my hand now a uh, decibel level sheet that tells you gives you an idea of what uh, what 108 decibels would be. That is louder than a subway, just slightly less loud than working with a power tool. Uh, a plane on an airport runway would be about 120 decibels. So that gives you some idea of what we heard two blocks away, 108 decibels of sound when uh, the charges went off, bringing down Market Square Arena. Now there was a reference on the radio to Elvis has left the building. This, of course, no doubt you know that Elvis Presley gave his final concert, final concert of his life at Market Square Arena. And really, it's a, it's a surreal looking thing to see it there one minute, gone the next. And uh, people who have spent years and years here, now just, you see a big empty spot. So we'll, it, it remains to be seen what will be built there. Some have talked about more residential area for downtown, but we certainly hope it lends to the resurgence. It was such an important part of the downtown skyline when you're coming by on I-65 and I-70 there where the two come together, and you see Market Square Arena. It's the first thing you see. It was sort of the gateway to the city for 27 years, and uh, now it is there no more. As soon as the dust clears, oh, we're beginning to see a little bit of the rubble now through the dust, this uh, from Chopper 13 as, uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what's left of Market Square Arena. Now, actually, it cost just under $600,000, that CDI's cost, to uh, implode this building. The cleanup is going to cost a lot more. In all, $3.5 million to remove this building. Let's take a look at the videotape. Uh, we have a replay now, ready to go, 
of the implosion. We're going to roll that here, and you get another look at, uh, at Market Square Arena coming down. And this is from the inside camera. Now, you should see some flashes that look like lightning here going through as Market Square Arena comes down. This is a live, not a live replay, a replay of the implosion. We're seeing this for the first time with you. Wow, that's a good shot. My goodness. Wow, it looks like the camera may have uh, survived a little better than, than we thought it might. But uh, that was amazing to see the, the building fall like that. And here you see the shot from Chopper 13 of the building going down. This is a pretty remarkable shot behind John and me now. Um, the dust has cleared away some, and you can really see the rubble of what's left, uh, some of the stands and, and some of what supported this building. Again, this is the replay that you're seeing. And this is from our New Jersey Street. Watch the uh, stair tower. That will fall first. And then after that hits the ground, the dome will follow. The stair tower right there will fall to the right, just as they had planned. And then the dome comes in on top of it. Some tremendously large pieces of steel went into the building of the dome at Market Square Arena. Now, they're going to be cut up and hauled away, but obviously it's much easier to cut them up while they are already on the ground than when they were still in the shape of a dome. This is remarkably dust-free. Here is the, this is the shot. This is pretty much what it looks like right behind where John and I are. That is, uh, I believe, from the heliport. And you see huge chunks that will have to be carried away. It looks like CDI did its job just fine. Well, it wasn't as dusty as some of the other implosions we've seen on videotape because, quite frankly, the dome at Market Square Arena didn't have a lot of concrete in it. It was really just a lot of air. And the structure above was mostly steel and uh, it's concrete that makes the dust concrete uh, formed the underpinnings of market square arena and uh, so we didn't see a lot of dust until the dome actually hit the bottom and uh, the dust cloud came up and as we're looking now live from chopper 13 you can see through the dust a bit at uh, what is left behind let's get that inside replay one more time because that that little camera we were debuting it on our set really gave us a great final shot. John, you were in there yesterday when uh, you were taping that camera up. It's hard to believe. As you can see, it doesn't look like it did back when we went to see the Pacer games and the uh, hockey games and concerts there. But here you can see live as the arena comes down from our sacrificial camera that was uh, mounted up in the uh, upper level of MSA. Wow, what the a roof, shot. The roof swinging in in front of it, which uh, is really quite extraordinary to see. That was a terrific shot. And here's another angle. This uh, from the Riley Towers, I believe, is it? Yeah, that's the Riley Towers camera. As Market Square comes down, just as they said it would, the uh, dome imploded in on itself, and uh, we have no reports yet of any collateral damage to nearby buildings. They work on the principle of gravity. They need gravity in order to work. This is the shot from Chopper 13. And there it goes, right in on itself. City County building is very, very close and looks to be unscathed. You look at a building the size of Market Square Arena and then when you hear that they use 600 pounds of dynamite to bring it down it doesn't sound like a lot but as Ann said what's really bringing down this building is gravity. The dynamite is just used to weaken the structure at key points and uh, that lets the building collapse in on itself. Now this was very very loud and that is part of the reason that they closed the interstate. Uh, they actually shut the traffic down on I-70 Chopper 13 showed us earlier, and then when they are sure that everything's secure and gawkers will no longer be a problem, then they'll let the interstate go again for people who are heading out to church wherever they're going. Again, a replay from our New Jersey Street camera directly across the street from Market Square Arena. Now, this camera uh, is likely to be buried in dust now. We're going to have to dig that one out, but uh, it was put in a shockproof box, so it would give you a good picture of the... Uh, arena implosion and I think it certainly did its job as well and there once again is the shot this is live from chopper 13 right now and it looks fairly dusty but not as dusty as many of the other buildings CDI has brought down in the past and it's no problem where we are sitting which is about two blocks away and that's where a great many people members of the crowd who came down 
came and got a ringside seat. And now they're beginning to file out and go home and get on with their day. Boy, you can get up and watch the implosion of Marcus Square Arena, still make it to church on time and, and uh, enjoy the events of what looks like a beautiful Sunday here in Indianapolis. Now, we mentioned that the interstate system was closed as it runs next to the city. And it wasn't just for gawkers that might have parked their car there. Could you imagine being from Tennessee, let's say, driving through town, you happen to be coming through on a Sunday morning, and what do you see? You see a huge dust cloud, you hear a big blast, as you're driving through, uh, it would be hard to stay in your lane, I would think. So uh, a prudent idea to shut down the interstate. And the state police told us that they have experience doing that when the president comes to town or something like that. They do, uh, they do the same thing. They close down the roads. Let's watch the replay one more time. And we'll get some reaction from the crowd. This is from our Skycam here at Channel 13 in the front yard of Channel 13. They likened it to uh, punching a hole in a souffle and watching the whole thing come down, and that's really pretty much what it looked like. It looked like a souffle falling in on itself, and uh, uh, again, we have no reports of any sort of collateral damage. It looks like the implosion of Market Square Arena went off without a hitch today. And one more time, why don't we take a look from our inside camera as the arena comes down. That is just a tremendous shot. Well, sometimes many people use this as an excuse to have a Sunday morning party. <laughs> one of the best, one of the best places, at least downtown, to see it and to have a party was the Easley Winery. We sent Chris Prophet out there. Chris, can you hear us? Yeah, absolutely, Andy. You know, that was the first time we had seen this, uh, that view that you had from the inside. What an incredible thing. Steve Walters is one of the guests here. They had a private party. 150 people were here, and they toasted after this all happened. You did the same thing, Steve, but you know what? You said it just a second ago. It was a little sad. It was sad. The end of an era. What about the explosion itself? I mean, I've heard a lot of people say it wasn't what they expected. How about you? Uh, it was interesting to watch it live, to watch the difference, uh, the sound, the feel, the smell, as opposed to watching it on TV, but I missed the replays, the different angles, that sort of thing. Oh, you'll see it over and over and <laughs> over again. Don't worry about that. We'll make sure of it. But... I heard a lot of people say that from our distance, and we're pretty close to this, or what it was, you can actually feel the explosion, true? Yeah. What did you feel? A vibration, just a, a couple of seconds. It was neat to watch the blast, the yeah. fire. Yeah. And then the only thing we really saw at that point was just something collapse. I saw, you know, what, 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 can you describe what you saw? Uh, we couldn't really see the staircases fall in from here. What we saw was the, uh, the dome uh, from where I'm at, I could see the roof, uh, the flaps on the roof fall in straight inwards just as it, just as like it, it was planned to do. Uh, CDI did an excellent job. Day to remember. All right, we'll send it back to you. All right, Chris Prophet live at Easley Winery. That's right, we have the whole Chris team out here today. Chris Wright is out with us, and we also have Chris Schubach. She's at the command center right now for uh, a word from there. Chris? Well, I have a couple of VIPs. One uh, here to my right is Jeremy Hudson, and he's with National Environmental. He was actually one of them that Push the button here, and uh, we want to get an idea of what that was like. I know you've had a, you've been working some long hours here, but talk to me about what those last few seconds were, then the, then the few seconds afterwards. It's really truly hard to describe. I mean, they come over the radio with the uh, countdown and the, the, the uh, charge, the, the blasting box, and the fire command, and uh, you know, you push the button, and then you hear the, the, the amazing, you know, thunder of, of sound, and then the building falls down. I mean, it's truly amazing. How did you get selected to do that? Oh, I don't know. I just, just asked uh, Mark Loazzo, and he said, okay, so. You have the envy of a lot of people here in Indianapolis. <laughs> Does everything seem like it, it went as planned? I think so. I, I really would like to go over and take a look at the pile and see where we're at. But the, uh, as, as far as right now, yeah, things look great. Okay, Jeremy, I'm going to let you get back to work, and thank right. you very much for uh, joining us this thank morning. So also, Mayor Bart Peterson, I saw you over here, and uh, you seem very pleased with the way things turned out. Well, I'm glad that everything went smoothly. You know, nothing can prepare you for that. You know, you can't, you can't be prepared for the sound, and... And to see the entire building just collapse almost instantly like that is, is pretty amazing. When you look at the structure now, is this kind of what you expected, or are you confident we're going to get this cleared out pretty soon? We'll get it cleared out. You know, what, what most people may not be aware of is that National Environmental has been here breaking off pieces of the parking garage and tearing them up and hauling them away for three months now. They've got another good three months' worth of work. I didn't quite know what to expect afterwards. It looks like a, a scene from a war, doesn't it? But it's, uh, I'm very confident everything's going to work. We've got the, uh, uh, the, 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 the risky part is done now, and so I think we're on our way. 
Okay, now the plan is to figure out what we're going to do with this once it's gone. Right, which I think, uh, as I said earlier, this really opens up the whole east side of Indianapolis for redevelopment. So I'm very excited about that. The, the whole area between Alabama Street and the interstate, uh, which had a wall that really walled it off from the rest of downtown, which was Market Square Arena, uh, is now open for, uh, to look at for redevelopment. So I think there's some exciting possibilities for Indianapolis. Okay, Mayor, thank you very much thank for joining you, us, and we will send it back to you guys. All right, thank you, Chris. And we should get a report pretty soon from CDI if there was any uh, damage outside of Market Square Arena. City Market, very close, right across the street. And that was the big concern in the beginning. In fact, in the beginning, they were thinking about dismantling Market Square Arena so that the City Market would not be affected. In the end, they decided that the implosion would be the best route to go, and uh, great care was taken not to damage the City Market and other nearby buildings. This was loud. This probably didn't come across on television quite as much. It was louder, certainly, than I expected. Let's get down to Chris Wright, who has a way to measure all this. Yeah, John, and then I recorded an average of about 102 decibels. That's about the size of like a jackhammer working in the construction zone. But the peak was 108, and as you can see over my shoulder right now, I did a pretty good job of bringing the building down. Just saw the CDI guys go inside right now to check for gas leaks and all the things they have to check for. But as you can see, it's down right now. It was very loud. A couple of explosions. I think I measured about four of them. A couple of them were 104, one at 102, and then one at 108. So it was a very loud explosion, but they did the job, and now it's time to do the cleanup. John and Ann? Boy, a lot of cleanup it will take, too. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And one thing that was interesting, they cut so many holes in inside the arena bowl itself that you could see some of the flashes from outside and it was uh, it was really quite a spectacular show to see the flashes break out of the holes in the roof and also on the inside just before the the building came down let's take another look right now a replay of the implosion we're going to take a look uh, starting from our camera at maryland street look at those flashes inside the building just before the dome falls Appreciative sound of the crowd. Very good show for a Sunday morning. This taking place just 15 minutes ago. And if you're just joining us, Market Square Arena is no more. That is what is left of it. The remaining uh, steel structure will be cut apart and hauled away. And uh, maybe someday we'll all be able to go tubing on what was <laughs> once Market Square Arena. That's right. That's what they're going to do with the rubble, build a tubing facility. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more coverage for you and more news of the day.